Well, hi, everybody. It's John Elzinger, and welcome back to It's a Great Day to Serve the Lord. And today, I want to talk about the seasons in life. Now, as you know, uh, there are seasons of life, such as I'm in the winter of my life. Uh, you may be younger, and you may be in the fall. You may be in the summer. You may be even younger, younger, and be in the spring of your life. But I would say, as, as we look at our seasons and aspects of life, I guess you could say from zero to what, 18 or 21 would be uh, the spring of your life. Uh, if you take from maybe 18, 21 um, on up to maybe 50-ish, it would be the summer of your life. If you would take maybe 50 to 65-ish, it would be the fall of your life. And you know, 65, 66, and so on, you would say you're in the winter of your life. But we also know that there are seasons in life. There are seasons within our life. And that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, through Solomon, God gave us a picture of life, a picture of the ups and downs, the evil and the good, the suffering and the celebration of life. This is the stuff of life, the real reality. And Solomon points this out in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Uh, it says, there is a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time uh, to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a, a, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, and then a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a, a time to tear down, and a time to mend, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Now imagine this. If we took all of the bad, all the negative, all the evil stuff in these times that we have in life, it would be a picture of maybe what it was like in the garden or what it will be like in eternity. It is a time where we are, we are born, we plant, we heal, we build, we laugh, we dance, we gather, we embrace, we search, we keep, we mend, we speak, we love and we have peace. Wouldn't that be great? But because of sin and through sin, all of those negative, evil, and suffering things have come into our reality. Some people have asked, well, if you're a Christian uh, and your God is so good, then why do bad things happen to Christians? Matthew 5, uh, 45b answers that question. It says, he, that is God, causes the sun to rise in the evil and the good and sends rain in the righteous and the unrighteous. Uh, Christians experience the trials of life and the stuff of life just not like non-believers. Non-believers experience uh, the joys of life, the good stuff of life alongside of believers. The key difference is positional. It's where you place your faith, where you put your trust, and ultimately where you find meaning in and through all of this. That's the difference. Here's the thing. All this stuff in life, Solomon actually calls meaningless. Meaningless. In Ecclesiastes 1, 2, he says, meaningless, meaningless says the teacher, ultimate, all utterly meaningless, everything is meaningless. Ecclesiastes 1, 14, he also says, I've seen all the things that are done under the sun, and all of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Ecclesiastes uses this phrase 33 times. Can you imagine that? I mean, it's, it's hard to get through this book without getting totally depressed. Why does he say that so often? 
I think Solomon's point is this, simply this. Without God in your life, everything's meaningless. Without God in your life, there's no real purpose. There's no real idea of what it's all about. There's no real concept of what God could have in mind in the midst of all the trials and tribulations and stuff that we go through in life. But with God in our life, everything takes on meaning. Everything has a meaning. We can go through life, we can encounter the trials and the stuff of life, and go through the seasons of life and seasons in life knowing that God has a purpose and a plan. God has a reason for it all. Psalm 138.8 says, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, for you. His steadfast love, O Lord, your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. God has a purpose for every one of us. God has a purpose for you in and within all of the seasons and stuff of your life. How does that work? 2 Corinthians 1, 3-4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. In other words, we go through all this stuff, and so do other people. And on the other side, as we maybe even as we go through it, we can come alongside of others who are going through the very same thing. We can, we can bolster them up. We can lift them up. We can encourage them. We can pray for them. We can be with them. We can give them advice. We can give them encouragement. We can give them insight into what happens if, when, how, whatever the, the circumstance may be, the stuff may be that you are going through. We go through it to have an impact, have an effect, have, a, have a, a, an encouraging lift to someone else who's going through it as well. My friend, I don't know where you're at in life. I don't know the trials, the circumstances, the situations, the trouble, or the seasons that you are going through. But I do know this. I do know that, that God is always there for you. All you have to do is look for Him, acknowledge Him, seek Him, pray to Him, believe in Him. And the meaningless of life will turn into meaning. Hopelessness will turn into hope. And emptiness and void will be filled. And the question what's it all about, will be answered. With Christ, you will find more joy and more meaning than in anything else in life. That's your devotions for this week. If you have supported this channel, thank you. If you would like to support it, there's a donation link below. Well, God bless you, and remember, it's a great day to serve the Lord.